This is the sample track from Sonicware, who also made the ELZ1, the Liven's 8 bit traps, XFM, and bass and beat, but the sample track kind of stands out from the other machines. This one is a sampler and a groove box. You can record different things with it, whether it's built in microphone, or you can plug in your own dynamic microphone to record stuff. And then with the samples you recorded, you can make instruments, you can use them in drum kits, or you can place them directly in your songs. So I played with it for two or three weeks during the holidays, and this one for me has been kind of an oddball, but in a good way, because as I do all my music in a door and use synth uh, to record them, I was not used to the workflow of this kind of machine. So today I'd like to talk a bit about the workflow with this machine. So while I'll do a bit with you, I will take her through different functionalities and features this machine has. So we'll see how that works, what are the limitations, and have fun with it. All right, so this is the sample track. This is what it looks like when you turn it on. On this screen, that is the main one. Each line is a different instrument and each column is a different scene. So you can make different loops for each instrument. So to navigate around, you either have this D-pad to move the cursor that goes with this OK and clear button to validate and cancel. And for other things, you can use this value knob that is uh, kind of the main one that you can turn and click. And you also have this A, B, C, D knobs, which you can turn and click also. So the first thing we're going to do to make a new beat would be to create a new project. So to do that, you click on this button and then you go to select new. So I can either do OK or click on the value knob and select an empty slot. Do I want to save the current project? No. Okay, so right now we have an empty project and we can start. So the first thing we want to do maybe is to load a drum kit so we can have a loop going on. So to load a new instrument, you go on the track and click OK and it will ask you which kind of track you want to make. You can do a loop track which will use a sample that will be played in loop. You can do a shot track which is also a sample that you can re-trigger. You can do an instrument so you take a sample that would be laid out on a piano keyboard so you can do notes with it or you can load a drum kit which is what we're going Going to do or you can make a MIDI track which is to control an external instrument. So for now we'll create a drum kit. Now the track is created but the instrument is not loaded yet. We just know the track is uh, of a drum kit type. But from there you can already move the cursor around. If I go on the clip and do OK, I will enter the clip. Whereas from there if I go on the instrument, so one left from there and I go OK, I enter the instrument setting. And from the main screen if I go up to go on the scene and click OK, I have the scenes setting. So to load a drum kit I need to go into the instrument setting, so I'll go left to go on the drums and click OK. A to select a kit, so I'll select a kit and I'll load let's say the dubstep kit. All right, so now if I go on the clip, OK, I can start playing stuff. So to start writing stuff, you need to activate the recording mode. Then you can go around with the D-pad. And for now, I will start with the hi-hats just to have like a metronome. Uh, I could use a metronome, but I find it easier to just put hi-hats and record on top of it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And if you write a note that you don't want, you can erase it by playing it again. You can select the pads or the steps you want with function. And when you don't use function, it will write them instead. So if I select a kick, it will write a kick. If I select something else and I select the kick with function, it will select the kick but not write it. And from there, I can write it where I want on the steps with those buttons. So I want, uh, let's say, on one, four, seven, 10, and 15, 16. Okay, time for a snare. So from there, we can change a bunch of different things in this clip. For example, if I click on this right button, it corresponds to this up arrow and that will open up a menu. And in this menu, I can change different parameters for each note. So for example, if I turn the A knob here, it will change the title. So here we have the note velocity selected, the micro timing, the level, the panoramic, the send effects. So right now I will change the note velocity and to change the value, I need to turn the knob C. So for all the hi-hats that I find a bit loud, I can turn them down a little. And maybe I want to have this uh, snare in the middle a little shorter. To do that, I will see what's in the pool. To access the pool, you do function and pool. And the pool is here so you can navigate everything that is in the sample track. Your samples, your MIDI files, and your drum kit. So I'll go into the drum kit to see what we have. It was in the preset. And it's 
the dubstep kit here. So I click OK and I can do edit because I will edit this drum kit. I can go into instrument parameter and I will change this sound. And in the parameters, if I click the right button here, I can go to the second page of parameters and there is the slope. The slope is basically the envelope. You can either shorten the release time or increase the attack time. And maybe I'll do the same with this second snare because I kind of like the short snares. Makes it quieter as well. It says cool, so I go back and here you can see the red button says save, so I will save that, yes. Yeah, so we gained a lot more space. And I'll do the same with the open hi-hat as well, just to have only short sounds to open up the space for the other instruments. Okay, so now that we have our drum loop, let's put another instrument. Let's see how to load an instrument track. So I'll go into the second track, click OK to create, and I'll select instrument track. Now it's created, but I need to load a sample in the instrument. So I'll go into the instrument, OK. See here, I can either click OK or click on the value knob to validate what's selected, or click on the A to select the A directly. So let's select a sample. I'll go into presets for the instruments and let's see what we have. Here you doesn't hear the samples as is, but if you want to hear them, you can go left to select the little play icon and then hit OK to hear it every time. Maybe I'll try the flute for this one. So I'll select this flute, OK, and now I have the sample. So we'll use it as is. So now it's loaded, we can start playing with it. If I go into the clip, click OK, we can start playing here. And with these two buttons on the side, you can change the octave. And on the keyboard, you have noticed that the C is lit up in purple, but you don't have to have the C note at the bottom. You can press function and these black keys to offset the keyboard so you can have any bass note you want. So let's record something. At the moment we have a problem is that our loop is just only one bar long and I want to record a bar that is longer than that. So, so on the main screen you need to go all the way up and then go OK. So we have the scene set up and we can see here that the scene is four bars long. So if the clips in the scene are shorter, they will be played in loop. And if the clips in the scene are longer, they will be cut after four bars. So then we go back in the clip and we'll click this pencil button, which is the setting button. So we, here we have the setting for the clip and here we have length notes. So maybe I'll go just 64. This way we'll have four bars. OK, so uh, let's do record. So this one shouldn't be here, this one shouldn't be here. Okay, looks cool. Okay, so from there, you can't really do sidechain on this machine, but you can automate the volume of the track, which is pretty cool, I'll show you. So I click on this button to access the parameters for the clip. I scroll A until I have the level, and I can lower that, build it up. So you can hear the step of this. It's not a sidechain, but it's an effect that I kind of like, like this. I wish I could copy and paste that because it can be pretty tedious, I admit, to do this. Okay, it's cool, so let's add another instrument because now I want a bass. So instruments, same, I will enter and load a sample, go check the presets, do I have a nice bass in there? Okay, let's try this one. Okay, so with A and B, I can move the A point and the B point. With D, I can zoom and C, I can move when I'm zoomed in. But then if I click on the value knob, I take control of the loop part. Okay, so now we can record a bass line. So I'll hit this pen icon, length and notes, and then I'll put 64 here. Let's go. Okay, if you want to change the volume of each track, you can do that with this mixer button. Here you select 
the track you want and for each track you can change the level, you can change the panoramic, you can change the send effect and you can change the equalizer. Okay, so for this bass, maybe it's a bit loud. And maybe I'll automate the levels as well like I did earlier to make kind of a sidechain effect. And I'll do that on the downbeat, but only twice per bar. Okay, I kind of want to see what it does with another sample. So we use this one. What about this one? So there are still a couple of things that I want to show you that are a little bit more advanced maybe, uh, because at the end of the day, this is a sampler. So let's try to record stuff with a microphone. So I'll use my Shure SM58, which is a dynamic mic. So I'll plug that in. I'll use an adapter on the other end and plug it inside here. So to record, we need to set up a couple of things. The first thing is to set up the input. So it will be in function rec source. In this menu, you can choose which source you want to record. So the first one is the built-in microphone, but I'll scroll and use this microphone. And here at the top, you can see that it tells you to plug it in the right output because the left output will be for instruments. It's tailored for instruments or you can use both to have a stereo signal. So first I'll select this microphone, check that it is working. Test one, two. Okay, so now that it is set up to record your own samples, you need to do function and sampling. So my goal here would be to beatbox a couple of sounds to layer them with the existing drum kit that we have. So let's record a couple of noises first. I'll hit start and then record my voice. Stop. So for now, I will save my sample as is. You can choose to save it into the pool that is uh, common to all your project or in the current project. So I renamed that Beatbox 2, for example. Now what I want to do is to chop it to layer it with our existing drum kit. Well, you have a function to chop your sample here. So in this mode, you can set it to auto so it will automatically chop it for you, like so. And you go next, let's store this in this project. And then directly from this menu, you can assign some of the songs you chopped to the pads that you still have available in your project. Then I'll skip the other ones and do next. So it will populate my pads with the samples I just chopped. But the problem here is that those samples are not in my drum kit. They are on separated tracks. So how do I do that? It's actually possible, but it needs a little bit of work around. And for that, we need to chop the sample by hand. Little correction here. I am currently editing this video and an update has just been released today, which allows you to directly create a drum kit with sample chopped in this way. This is a great improvement, but I'll still show you how to individually trim each sample manually, as it also allows you to normalize each of them as you go. So first I'll erase the tracks we just created by going to each of them and doing clear this track. Yes. Okay, so how do we do that? We do function and pull, so we can go fetch our sample, which is in pull. And this one, I will try to trim it. Zoom with the, move the points. Okay, so I'll take this one. Oh yeah, and to chop it, you have different modes. See at the bottom with the arrow and V, that means if you click on the value button, you can change this. Uh, this first mode is in BPM, so the sample will be there one bar long, and I can change this mode to have it as a B point. This way I'll be able to move the B point to make the sample shorter. Okay, so I'll save that, execute, and this one I will normalize as well. And each transformation you do in this way will not erase the original sample. It will resave another sample with a new name. And then I'll reload the normalized beatbox for trimming and fetch another sound. Perfect, execute. Okay, so now I can go in my kit, go fetch the kit I used, edit it, choose a sound I don't want to use. I remove this too. So I'll just select a new file and select beatbox to snare. We could change the pitch. We could reverse it. Okay, and on this one, I'll put the hats. So first page, select sample in the pool, beatbox to hat, okay. And what we could do, we could use the slope to make it shorter, to have like a more closed hi-hat. Or we could make it longer and have a long attack to make it sound more like a shaker. 
So with this sample, we could already have one closed hat, one opened hat, or a shaker. And actually for this one, maybe I'll go for the shaker as we don't have one in this kit. Okay, so this kit is okay. So I will save it, save, overwrite kit, yes. So now back in our projects, if I go in the drums, So now we have all our drums set up and I had one last thing that I wanted to show you and that were the effects. And for that, we'll record one last instrument. And I'll trim it to have only one note. This one, I will normalize it as well, just to have some volume. So I'll create a new instrument track and load our newly made sample in there. Okay, so now that we have that, That's pretty cool. I will use it as is. Let's go. And from there, I would like to put some effects on it. So to do that, you do function and effect. And from there, you can put up to three effects in your project. The first one would be an insert effect. So that's an effect on one track. The second one would be a send effect. So that's like an effect on a return track. The advantage of this is that you can send a lot of track to the same effect. And the third effect would be a master effect that will affect all the tracks in your project. So say I want to add an insert effect. I'll turn it on with the A knob. I'll choose my effect with the B knob. Say I want a delay. And I choose the track it will affect with the C knob. Let's say I want the fourth instrument track. See how it sounds. And then on the second page you'll have the parameters for this effect. So the time, the feedback, the time but synced to the tempo. So let's try one dotted eighth and then the balance, the dry wet for the effect. Okay, so that's cool, that's how you can add an effect, but what about if I want to add another effect on this track, or if I want to add another effect on another track? That's when you kind of hit the limitation of the machine, but there is a way to work around that, and that is by resampling the sound of your track. That's where you feel this is a sampler and you have to embrace this kind of workflow. You can feel it's because of the limitation of the machine, but it still allows you to do many things. So how do we do that? To resample this track, we have to go function and rec source. So there I'll scroll and select the resampling source with the A knob and with the C knob I will select which track I want to resample. So that would be the fourth instrument track. Now that it is set up I have to do function and sampling to record. Press start and it will start recording as soon as there is a sample playing. And stop. So I'll save that in the pool. I will call it loop 2. We'll normalize it right away. I prefer to have it normalized every time. Then I'll create a new track and that will be a loop track so the sample can be played in loop. I'll enter that and I'll press the pencil icon to access the settings and go select sample. I'll go fetch in pull the loop. And if you remember earlier, we used the value knob to put the sampler into A, B mode so we could uh, change the A point and the B point. But here we'll use it to keep it in bars but select four bars because the loop is four bars long. And then we'll scroll and try to find the beginning of the loop. We can Zoom in with D. Okay, that looks fine. So next, time stretch, no. And there you go. Let's hear the whole thing. So from there, I can add other effects. Let's say a chorus. And now that we have chorus and delay on it, I could resample it again and you won't have to create another loop track. You can reuse the same track to load the new updated sample every time so you can add more and more effect this way if you want to. And then to finish with this effect, we can check the effects in sense to add some reverb for example. Let's see how it sounds. For that, I'll go in the mixer again and I'll send a little of this lead in the send effects.
In the mixer I can tune down the reverb. And in the drums, because there are several tracks in the drums, you can send individual tracks in the send effects. And that happens in the edit of the drum kit. So for now, if I send the drum kit as is in the send, only, only the tracks that have been pre-selected will go to the send effects. And right now, I don't know which one they are. And lastly, we can have a look at the master effect. We have some finishing touches like vinyl, cassettes, uh, compressor, EQ limiter, and maximizer. I think I'll take the compressor, but one thing to note is that those master effects don't work if, if in the insert effect you use any of the amp effects, like clean amp, crunch amp, rock, metal, and bass amp, because there are just too much taxing on the performance of the machine. So that's where resampling comes in very handy. And lastly, we haven't seen any filters in the effect, and that's actually in the mixer directly. There is an EQ on the D knob. Say I want to remove some blows from the lead, because there is a little bit of noise that is unnecessary necessary there, uh, I can do that from here. So I can dial that with the D knob here, but if I click on it, I have other views related to these filters. So say I want a high pass filter, I can click on D, then I have the frequency. And this is a weird one because the value here is not the frequency, it's a value between zero and 127. So it's cool for the internal programming of the machine, but it doesn't reveal any useful information to the user there. And if I click again, I have the amount. So I guess that the resonance here. And if I click again, it loops back to here. And there, I would have loved if we could find those filters in the effects sections, because as is, we can't resample those filters and EQ points, because it's on the track, it's not in the instruments itself. So we can't resample it. And that's the only EQ we have, and one point per track is really not a lot. And I guess that's all I had to show you for the workflow I have with this machine. I think I still have a lot to discover, but I hope everything I showed you today uh, will help you have fun with this machine or help you understand how it works. So. So I guess that's all for this bit. So this is how the sample track works, and there's a lot to be said, I couldn't go through everything, but I hope this gives you a good idea of how to handle this machine. I really enjoyed it, and even if sometimes it feels fiddly and takes some time to do some basic operations, it made me do stuff I'm not used to, and I appreciated that. You know, take some sounds, cut them, make a new instrument, or something new with it. There are a lot of limitations, but I feel there are some ways to get around them, and while I was trying this machine, I had a lot of these moments of discovery, like, oh, I can do that in that way, and that was really cool. Though I would still have loved more options to transform your samples. Like, I would have loved to be able to set an instrument as monophonic and have glide between notes. But this would need to have a very sustained sound, and for the instruments, the length of the samples are limited. Which leads me to my next point. You can loop samples, but you can't change the way the loop is played. I would love to have fades in those loops and have like a ping-pong playback, where the sample is read back and forth, to make it easier to make smooth, sustained sounds. It would have been very cool to have filters, EQs, and reverb as insert effects as well to be able to resample them. Or just to have an option to resample them as sends and mixer effects, because right now you can't resample them to stack them up. Speaking about resampling, it would be cool to have an option to bounce a track in place. Like for example, you would have an instrument track with an effect on it, and you would have an option to replace it directly with the loop sample track, with the recording of your track in it, and the loop already set up. And last thing would be to be able to copy and paste notes in a pattern, like to repeat bars including notes and automation lanes. Because writing four 
four times almost the same melody with the same automations to fill four bars can be quite tedious. But the things maybe could be implemented in the future as the sample track is still being updated. The last update has just been released today as I am editing this video, and it allows you to create up to four drum tracks instead of one. And it allows you to create drum kits directly from your chapped samples, which is a huge improvement already. But the thing I really liked was the form factor, the fact that it is really transportable. And with those kind of controls with the arrows there and the button here, um, it really looks like a video game console. So it makes it really easy to carry it around and make music anywhere. And that's something I appreciated during the holidays to be able to carry it around and make music when I had an hour here and there. So to sum it up in a few words, I felt the limitations more than I thought, but it was more fun than I expected. And I'm looking forward to play more with it. And I guess that will be all for today. So tell me in the comments what you think about the sample track, how you feel about it. If you made it until this point, thank you very much for watching. A huge thanks to my pioneer Patreons. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and take care. I'll see you next time. <laughs>